that time. So I think uh, we can start with the first question because it's 833. Uh, so the problem is factorial trailing zeros. You are given an integer and you have to find the number of trailing zeros. So for example, for factorial three, uh, it's one into two into three, which means six. There is no trailing zero. Um, for factorial five, there is one because it is 120. So uh, how many of you have tried to solve it? I wish I could see the like, you know, participants while I'm talking. Uh, but when I'm sharing this screen, I can't find like, you know, how to see the participants. So let me stop share. Um, let me try to share my screen and then like, you know, yeah, if anyone can like, you know, raise their hand, uh, we can talk about the approach and then we can go from there. Uh, hey, Roger, you can, uh, you can sh uh, see the participants while sharing the, uh, your screen as well. You just need to go to the uh, more option of that and there you can see the participants. Oh, I see. So from here, I should still go to share. Uh, oh, I see here. Where is that more, more? This one? Actually, we can't see that we are what you are getting, but it's, uh, it's over there only that you can yeah. yeah, there is a managed participants. It's, it comes as a pop-up, but it's fine. Okay, no problem. Let's play with it for some time. So guys, anyone want to talk about their approach if they have solved the first problem, factorial? Uh, so I haven't solved it, but I can give a try. Sure. Uh, like uh, we know the factorial formula. If we do go for the factorials and uh, it's a brute force. We can go for finding the factorial and after getting a number, we can just need to uh, check the last digits, like how many times our zeros are there for that particular number. Yeah, that's a nice start actually. But yes, anyone else has like, you know, sees the problem or any better way to do, the, do it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, what we need to do in this problem is we need to find the number of fives actually uh, Whenever you know if I have a number let's say 20 uh, So what I need to find uh, more is uh, how many number of fives? Uh, it means like uh, how many numbers that are divisible by five are available before uh, 20 you know because every five will come with some two or four that way uh, upon multiplying, we'll get a 10 for sure. Okay. So uh, somehow we need to calculate the number of fives that we'll have, uh, you know, until uh, the uh, till we compute the factorial. So in that way, we won't need to, you know, uh, to compute the whole factorial, but uh, we could do that only by somehow dividing uh, the number by five repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Maybe some that way. I didn't code it, but uh, that was the thing that dragged into my mind as soon sure. as I saw the question. Yeah, I mean, idea seems pretty good. And uh, anyone has any question on this idea? Like, uh, I can start sharing my screen and we will go over it so that we, okay, why I'm going there. So I actually solved the way uh, Sonia said like mm -hmm. calculating the factorial, this is Smitha, calculating the factorial and then finding the end zeros. Uh, the problem, I got a lot of test cases wrong. One was because I was taking integer and it was crossing mm -hmm. the limit, integer limit. Then I tried with long, even with mm -hmm. that it was crossing the limit that the long integer because it goes exponentially. So I, I couldn't right come to the resolution for that. So then I started looking into discuss and I came across the solution that was just mentioned by Yasha, I guess. Uh, so uh, can we make that the, the result, whatever we got in a string and then we can calculate the zero. That's a long approach, but 
can we do that sure so that's a good question so what you are doing like you know is basically factorial n you are going through one into two up to n right and then you get you just calculate it and then you divide by zero and then you get all the leftover num like you know values so suppose it was just uh, something 12000 then you will count these three things because you keep dividing by 10 right that's your approach and the problem was overflow and also like you know it it may not fit in uh, the number range so some of the languages actually like you know they provide um, you ways to store that as a string so for example in java you have big integer you can use that and uh, it will do like you know internally it will do the string conversion to store the numbers and you can divide it by like you know uh, big <laughs> int 10 after you get your result and you can still make it work so yes it is possible if you use big int but yeah we don't have to use it as a, you know someone explained that uh, when we do this factorial thing okay any question on this approach first of all then we will talk about the better approach no question okay good so now uh, we had an an example factorial 3 which was basically 1 into 2 into 3 and its value is 6 right easy factorial 5 was 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 and it is 120, 120. Yeah, yeah 120 and what like he realized that hey 5 is coming here and 2 is coming here so these two guys combined to give me one zero that is the observation he did and so now the question is who is the main contributor is it two or is it five uh, that's so, five actually good very nice and why five is the major contributor uh, because every time there will occur a five or uh, 15 or maybe something it will you know it will succeed a uh, two or four or a even digit number which will multiply to give a 10 right that's a very nice way so if you try to draw like you know frequency for five and two two occurs more frequently right so every time five occurs like you know four already has occurred so it can borrow two from the one previous guy and there are so many even numbers it can choose anyone to generate one zero at the end yeah right yeah good so we can keep doing that uh, so next um, thing comes when you try to calculate factorial 25 because this way we can say hey if i have to calculate factorial 15 i'm uh, sorry factorial 15 then you just keep dividing by five i know five comes three times so you will have three zeros, right? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, can you explain why we use two again? Because I can say like uh, two times five, 10, four times five, 20, you know, you know, eight times five, 40. So that all, we have a lot of zero in there. But, uh, you know, out of two, four, uh, six, or uh, eight, why we have to select two? You can select for example here you can select four also right if you select four you are getting 20 right if you just select four here but what we care about if we choose any even number in place of four or two you can select six if, if you were ahead the net result is you will get one zero that is the constant thing here right Okay. So, so five needs one even number to generate ten. Let's call five is a producer, and to generate z like any zero, it needs any even number. Doesn't matter which that even number is. Right, but uh, it's not like cumulative. 
like you know five times two and then later five times four five times six or no 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 it's it's not cumulative it's not cumulative i'm just showing you that it it will choose one pair any even number is a like you know you can choose with five and you know it's a property of five that if you multiply five with any even number you will get a zero at the end okay so that was one thing so for factorial 15 similarly how many times you will get five you will get five and then you will start getting into six into seven into eight nine ten um into 11 12 13 14 into 15 sorry so this was one five this 10 is again like you know it can it has one five inside it 15 has one five inside it so you have three fives so you can generate three zeros because each of these guys can pair up with one even number preceding them and they can generate one zero in your result but the problem or like you know things are interesting when you start with factorial 25 because in case of that you will have after 24 you will have 25 and 25 is 5 into 5 mm -hmm. so this guy has not just one five it has two five so this five can multiply with one of the even guy and this five can also go and multiply with any even guy and can generate actually two zeros, not just one zero. Mm -hmm. So that is the, like, you know, core of this uh, algorithm. Like after 25, you have to like, uh, you can't say that, Hey, just dividing by five is good enough. You keep dividing by five unless you get a like a, mm, product of five, and that's how you can generate the factorial. Any questions? Like, no questions. It's good then. So yeah, that is the main idea and let me see can you see my mm, code already or not i have to no. stop okay so i have to stop share i don't want to show code but it's a small code so why not like mm, uh, a share screen exactly what we just talked about we have this number n and we keep dividing by five and we keep accumulating the result and then we just return the result. So that's it. I mean, so, uh, where in this code uh, we handle a case like uh, 25? Yeah. Yeah, it will handle a case of 25. Uh, one question. Uh, so if we have a three, can you handle that case as well? Like before five, let's say four. Yes, yeah, and five yeah, is it will return zero because uh, the value is zero. only the numbers when n is greater than one. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, result won't update, I guess. What's the question? Sorry, like what should I take as example three? You're saying? Yeah, yeah. So when you, yeah, when three comes, then you will not actually, result will say zero here, right? Because dividing three by five will be zero. And then that number is again, like, you know, you are out of loop at this point of time. So you will say there are zero trailing zeros. Oh, okay. Okay. Got you. Yeah. So I can handle 25 as well. Yeah. If it is 25, so this will be, first of all, it will have five, right? And this number will change to five, right? Because 25 by five is five. So yeah. it will again go inside loop once because five is greater than one. So you will add one. So this will become six and then N will become uh, five by five. Is like, you know, it will out of this loop and then you have accumulated six here.
you can play with the code it's uh, like you know idea if you were clear about the idea you can write it in any way um make sure you are dividing because when you have to choose be between dividing or multiplying uh you can avoid overflow if you choose to divide so that is one uh, good way to you know do the same thing to say to avoid surprises any question on this problem or we can move to the new one? or any other ideas that is fine uh yes yeah, so basically uh, when we are dividing and repeatedly by 5 uh, we are handling such cases when uh, we'll get 25 or 125 or you know 625 uh, we are yeah. handling those cases by the line number 7 i guess yes right right okay thank you great so let's do the next question then i think we are done with this unless someone wants to share any other approach i like the first approach by the way i was thinking about that too that what if we want to just use the definition of the factorial but yeah it's good that we brought it up uh, but that will even you know exceed the time limit i guess uh, for the big numbers for large numbers i haven't tried yeah i haven't tried but yes maybe any problems yeah, should be that like you know yeah actually it's written your solution should be in logarithmic time complexity uh, yeah and that will so take it, big off and necessary yeah. so it already tells you something <laughs> that hey don't go with o of n at all <laughs> yeah that's a good one okay any questions before we move to the next question i think we should move to the, the no 